At that point, Michael said, that's enough. I'm not going to talk anymore unless you allow me to have an attorney with me. So there you have 911. Now you're saying to me, all right, Ted, anybody can say that, that Michael had this information. I have in front of me right here certified stamp from Michael Reconosuto to Don Bailey, former congressman, U.S. congressman, no longer in office, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I have here in front of me a letter that went with that certified stamp dated February 6th. The letter's dated February 5, 2001. And in this letter, it's written in longhand, Michael says to Bailey, things have now come to a head. I, know, I now have contact with uh, an operative that is an Arab group known as the base, that's Al-Qaeda. They are presently engaged in preparation for a major attack in the United States. We have an insider to this group that handles false IDs and passports for the group's operation. I also have contact with one of my parties that supplies explosive materials to the group, and so on and so forth. Last page of the letter. Uh, as soon as we learned that an actual attack was in the works, we realized we can't fool around with this. On the other hand, we don't want to get screwed by the government. That's the understatement of the day, of course. They're good at screwing us. So I, I, Michael gives me this information. January 3rd, 4th, and 5th, spent three days with him, three whole days with him. I wrote up this report. This report's available to you, by the way, through my website, tedgunderson.com. And what do I do? I go to Washington, D.C. Take this report. I spend three weeks in Washington, D.C. That was not an inexpensive trip, by the way. You ever stay in Washington for three weeks, you're in trouble if you don't have, have a few bucks. I didn't have the money, so I slept at the, uh, on top of some, uh, of cardboard, not cardboard, but uh, plywood on top of some uh, the upside-down plastic mail containers with a, a, a make-believe, a makeshift uh, mattress there. I slept on that in the American Free Press office, by the way, for three weeks, and I passed out my report to more than 150 congressmen and senators. I have in front of me right now a letter to Mr. Lee Hamilton dated January 29, 2003. Michael, what I did is I referenced my interviews with Michael on January 3rd, 4th, and 5th, and I told him who Michael was in this letter without going into a lot of detail, and I told him the information he had. I gave Lee Hamilton, co-chairman of the President's Commission to investigate 911. I gave Hamilton my report, in addition to passing it out to 155 congressmen and senators, and asked the committee to debrief Michael as soon as possible. The last I heard from the President's Commission, Michael was never debriefed, and nothing ever came of that. There's no mention of that in the President's, uh, in the, the police, uh, the uh, President's Commission to investigate 911 report. Now, here's a list of people and agencies that I gave my report to. I gave it to the three sisters. Do you know who the three sisters are? Washington Post, New York Times, L.A. Times. And, of course, nothing ever came of that. You remember this girl in this FBI attorney in Minneapolis who um, uh, came forward with a memo, and they chastised her, and she was demoted, and I don't know what all happened to her. Told her to keep her mouth shut. Appeared in Time Magazine. Well, I looked up the Associated Press reporter who took that information and reported it. And I called him on the phone, specifically. And I told him I had this information. I sent him a copy of my report. Two weeks later, I called him. I said, are you going to report it or not? He said, no, not. I said, why not? He said, it's too hot. It's too hot. Here's uh, some of the agencies. Drug Enforcement, FBI, BATF, Secret Service, LAPD, San Bernardino Sheriff's Office, National Terrorist Hotline, and all the congressmen and so forth, Associated Press, Philippines Consulate. I gave it to everybody and his brother. British Consulate Division, Scotland Yard. I gave it to everybody. Nothing ever came of it. Now, if you look back, I'm sure you're probably familiar with the fact that bin Laden met with CIA agents in Dubai, Jan July 4th through the 14th. We discussed uh, 
the interview of uh, Mr. Kennedy, T Tom Kennedy, member of the Federal Emergency Management, who said that they arrived there, the first on the scene, Monday night. The terrorist attack took place on Tuesday morning. Congressman Kurt Warner's Weldon's book, quote, Countdown to Terrorism, cites 10 cities, based on information he has, that are targeted for bombs in the future. Those are Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Valdez, Alaska, because of the oil coming out of Alaska, Boston, New York City, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Miami, Chicago, and Houston. So, as a result of these terrorist acts, what has happened? The Patriot Act, Federal Emergency Management, right? That's what it's all about. That's what the terrorist acts are all about. To take away our constitutional rights and civil liberties. You know, no one in Congress read the Patriot Bill before it was signed and passed. Nobody. It was authored by one man, a fellow named Viet Dinh, D-I-N-H, who was born in communist Vietnam, was magna cum laude, Harvard University. By the way, I was magna cum lucky at the University of Nebraska. <laughs> That's about right, too. I didn't study. <laughs> I don't know how I got the FBI. I was one of the youngest FBI agents in the history of the organization. I applied when I was 22 years old. You had to be 25. Uh, Din served as special counsel at the impeachment of the trial of Bill Clinton. 2001, when the Patriot Act was adopted, Din was with the U.S. Department of Justice advising President Bush on constitutional matters. 5,000 people have been arrested pursuant to the Patriot Act. It states it is legal to arrest and detain individuals without the involvement of any attorney and without probable cause or the filing of formal charges. This is, a, this is what's really going to shock you now, okay? The bill was switched in early morning hours to substitute a bill that was prepared by the executive branch. The original Patriot Act was drafted and agreed upon by both Republicans and Democrats and both the House and the Senate. At the very last bill, at the very last minute, the bill was switched and substituted by Din's bill. President Bush had the substitute bill printed at 3.45 a.m., only hours before the House voted for it that same morning. Out of 435 representatives, not one person in Congress read the Patriot Act before voting in the favor of the substitute bill. It was not the bill that was originally reviewed, approved, and adopted by 36 votes of Republicans and Democrats in the Judiciary Committee. It was a 300-plus page bill that had never been read or seen before. It was passed overwhelmingly by the House and the Senate and signed into law on October 26, 2001. There are 27 amendments to the Constitution. The bill outright destroyed all the amendments relating to our civil rights and protection of our freedom. The First Amendment, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. Librarians were reported to have to report anybody who checked out certain books to the FBI. And if the, lib if the librarian didn't do it, she could be arrested and prosecuted and going to jail. The Franklin cover-up was one of the books that was on that list. This is a book about child kidnapping and a book about taking kids from Omaha, Nebraska, flying them to D.C. for sex orgies with congressmen, senators, and blackmailing them so they will vote for these bills. This book is not being carried in the chain stores, Borders, or the other stores at all. They won't carry it. John DeCamp has sold 180,000 copies of this. It's in demand. John had to publish it himself to get it out. So this is one of the books that was on that list. I had a letter from an individual in Oregon who gave me that information. Checked out this, this book and uh, noticed that the library made a special note of it. Made some inquiries on it. They denied it, but it's very obvious that's the case. And I mentioned the First Amendment. 
this uh, requires a librarian to turn over not only records about books, but also about Internet records. And as I said, there's a penalty of prison for the librarian who does not comply with this act. Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. People to be secure in their homes, houses, and papers effects. The act allows the illegal search of your home and property while no one is at home without your knowledge or consent. Without a search warrant or probable cause, law enforcement officers can secretly enter your home for the purpose of collecting computer files and reading lists, video, magazine collections, and any other information about that person. Of course, this puts you out of business. If you're in business, they grab your computer, and then you don't have any money to defend yourself. I have to tell you this. My home, every place I've lived since I became involved in these issues, which was 1980. I first became involved in the movement in 1980. Every one of my homes has been invaded by these people. My home is like Grand Central Station to these people. Okay? Not only that, and I'm serious. I mean, I've had them come in when I'm not there. I've had them come in when I'm sleeping there. I went to bed one night at midnight in Las Vegas. I had a condominium there. My bathrobe was at the foot of the bed. I had to get up at 3 o'clock to go to the bathroom. And the bathroom had been laid out next to the bed like a rug, like in ceremonial fashion. Yeah, they come in. They can, I finally was able to put a stop to it. I put special bolts on the doors and I put a bar in the sliding glass door and all that sort of thing. And they didn't come in anymore. But it took me a while to, 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 to figure this out. Not only that, not only have they been invading my home for years, sir, there's a, sir, we call them surreptitious entries. Uh, I've had about 18 to 20 people planted on me. One person after another after another. These people come to me, ask for help. I take them in, try to help them. I took one fellow in for a year. I took another fellow in for seven months, thinking he's in the Patriot movie. I had no place to go. Stu Webb came to me. I need a place to stay for four days. Stayed seven months. When he left, he stole a bunch of my research. I had 35 copies of Thanks for the Memories. And then the next thing I know, he's, I find out he's an FBI informant. And he's putting out disinformation on me. That's one of the techniques they've used to discredit me. And, uh, for example, he says I was kicked out of the FBI for practicing satanic ceremony in the federal building. And uh, that I was, um, I've been married five times. I've only had one marriage. I've gone close a couple of times, but it didn't work out, fortunately. Okay. I'm not marriage material. Okay. No one shall be punished without being duly convicted. And on July 21, 2005, both House and the Senate voted to extend the Patriot Act. Now, you'd think by then they would have wised up, realized they hadn't read it in the first place, and they would have done something besides voting to extend it. It broadened its scope and made it uh, some of the, most of the act, most of the acts permanent. So it took 262 Republicans, 77 Democrats, to outright kill the Bill of Rights. Now, are you familiar with executive orders? Anybody who's not familiar, raise your hand. Well, okay, executive orders were designed years and years ago for instructions to departmental heads within the government. The presidents have taken advantage of it and signed executive orders against us, those of us who are walking the streets. There are a number of executive orders in place today so with the combination of the Patriot Act and these executive orders, we are now living in a fascist government. This is Nazi Germany, reborn. Executive Order 10990, take over all forms of transportation, control, control highways and seaways. Another executive order. Seize all communications, media, tele, uh, telecommunications, Internet, radio, and television. Another executive order. Take over all electric power, gas, petroleum, fuels, and minerals. Another one. Seize all means of transportation, including personal cars. I wonder if they're going to keep up the, the payments on I don't know. Uh, take over all uh, local resources and farms. Executive order 11000. Mobilize civilians into work brigades under government control. Executive order 11001. Take over all health, education, welfare. Postmaster General, another executive order. Uh, or operate a national registration of person. They're going to register all of us. They're talking about ID now. 